The BenQ EW2880U is a 4K HDR monitor with USB Type-C connectivity. And in this review you're going to see if it's actually worth its price tag because in the UK it can be found for roughly £400 while in the US around $500 and furthermore how it compares to its sibling the EW2780U which I ironically reviewed almost a year ago at least at the time of filming. Now to kick off this review you're going to quickly touch upon the differences between these two monitors and here here the EW2880U has a 28 inch form factor as opposed to the 27 inch form factor has a peak brightness of 300 nits in comparison to its siblings 350 nits. In terms of its color gamut, BenQ claimed that this will hit around 90% of the DCI-P3 standards and that's different in comparison to the 99% of the sRGB standard that its predecessors is claimed to hit. As for its stand, it's got a little bit more of a premium design in comparison to the EW2780U and it also has AMD FreeSync technology and a built-in remote all of which we're going to touch upon further down in this review but I thought this segment might be useful for prospective buyers who are intrigued and want to know the differences between these two very similar priced and indeed spec monitors. So with that out of the way let's get on to the image quality. Now the monitor very much like its sibling runs an IPS panel on a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and has a refresh rate of 60 Hertz and a resolution of 3840 times 2160 in other words 4k or not cinema 4K at least. Now when I put it across my Calibrite CC Display Plus Calibrator, I noted a 99.7% sRGB gamma coverage and a 128.9% sRGB gamma volume. As for DCI-P3 standard, it hit 86.6% and 91.3% respectively. Here you can see how it compares to the sRGB standard and here you can see how it compares to the DCI-P3 standard. Now when it comes to color accuracy, I always test against sRGB and here you can see that out the box it hits a average delta E of 1.49 and a maximum of 6.1. Here contrast ratio was tested at a respectable 1047 to 1. Now this just shows that the monitor isn't exactly tuned to the sRGB standard and while you might be intrigued about its DCI-P3 standard color accuracy, it should be noted that it's not exactly all that great either because it's just off a little bit. Now here I was also intrigued to see how it would compare to the EW2780U and as I had my old Datacolor Spider-X Elite calibrator at hand I put it across the same sort of tests and I was quite surprised to find quite a variance between the two calibrators. Here I noted an average delta of 2.13 and a maximum of 5.44 with a test contrast ratio of 969 to 1. Now the reason I'm bringing my old calibrator into the mix over here is purely because that's how I tested the old EW2780U and I thought to see how it would compare like for like to the EW2880U that we have on review. Nevertheless, all I'm trying to say over here is sRGB color accuracy isn't exactly spectacular and given the price that you're paying over here, I would have expected a little bit more from BenQ. The same could have been said about its predecessor, although the 27 inch model did a little bit better in this department. Now similarly here, the overall brightness has reduced by around 50 nits and as such I just noted around 300 nits peak brightness and a minimum of around 47 nits. Here it suffice to say that if you're running HDR content, you're not actually going to get any sort of better experience and it's very much the same that could have been said about its predecessor although given that it could reach around 350 nits it's a shame that BenQ have even gone even lower with this monitor and yet are asking for the same price. Ultimately what I'm trying to say over here is that while the peak brightness won't be of a problem for most consumers if you want to run in terms of its HDR capabilities here you'll be left quite disappointed. Now on the plus side the overall brightness uniformity is pretty good across the board and the same could be said about IPS backlight bleeds. Of course if you're looking to eradicate IPS bleeds then you're ultimately going to have to go for a VA panel at least if you want some sort of color accuracy or indeed result to a TN panel although I really wouldn't suggest that specifically if you're in the market for a 4k HDR monitor. So with the image quality section out of the way what about when it comes to gaming? 
Now, I appreciate both this monitor and its predecessor aren't exactly gaming centric monitors, but I thought to touch upon it because I did it on my previous review, and also this monitor has AMD FreeSync technology built in. Indeed, the EW2880U has VR range of around 40 to 60 hertz, which actually in some cases might somewhat be laughable because here, if you're not going to be hitting around 40 hertz, you're going to have some severe stuttering to the point where you might actually want to disable VR altogether. At least that was from my experience of what I saw on running the Nvidia Pendulum demo whilst connected to my RTX 28 C per via DisplayPort. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say over here is that the FreeSync range and also the overall FreeSync capabilities of the 28-inch form factor isn't something that you should be really shouting about and or really going to be investing in. But what about the rest of its gaming credentials? Well, the input lag isn't as impressive as its 27-inch form factor sibling. And here, yet again, I was just left a little bit disappointed by the newer BenQ. On the plus side, the overall response time on the monitor is somewhat likable to its predecessor, and I noted no sort of inverse ghosting even in the highest overdrive mode. In other words, AMA, which you can dial between three different modes, and playing a game like Counter-Strike, Halo Infinite, or let's say Destiny 2 at no inherent problems with purple trailing. But of course, your mileage may vary depending on how graphically intense games you're playing and or content that you're consuming. Now, moving on to the monitor's OSD, it can be accessed through a set of buttons found behind the monitor, or indeed via the included remote. Now, while I'm using the remote right now to film and showcase the OSD, I don't really feel all that useful when it comes to day-to-day -day usage. But of course, do let me know in the comments below if it's something that you would personally see yourself using and or is one of the unique selling points for you. Now, as for the settings, there are a bunch of different ones that you can adjust. Now, in the picture, you can adjust the brightness, contrast, sharpness, and indeed enable super resolution. This will, of course, depend on your own personal preferences and indeed your ambient light conditions. In my case, I found it to be pretty good out the box. As for the color modes, it's a slightly strange and somewhat surprising not to see a dedicated sRGB mode nor a DCI-P3 mode, but there are some other ones over here, such as Rec. 709. You can, of course, adjust the settings yourself if you go on the user mode. Now, as for HDR mode, I'll leave this disabled altogether unless you're running an HDR signal because it completely skews your overall colors. Cinema HDRI and Game HDRI really don't give you a good experience even if you are running an HDR signal. So that's worth bearing in mind, or at least that's my subjective opinion about it. As for color temperature, you've got three to choose from, normal bluish and reddish, and if you want to adjust it yourself, you have to go on the user-defined color mode, and indeed here you have the user-defined option available to you. As for the advanced, you've got Gamma and AMA, and here AMA is the overdrive setting, which I did reference before, and if you're going to be playing some games, I'd very much encourage you to run on the premium mode because it gives you the best overall response time of the monitor whilst not incurring too much inverse ghosting. Now, as for the audio settings, there are a bunch of different audio modes that you can select, and here the monitor does indeed house two 3-watt speakers. Now, they're not as impressive as the two 5-watt speakers found in the 27-inch form factor, but nevertheless do well across the frequency range and even in the cinema or let's say the rock or party mode I found that the monitor's overall vibrancy and the overall way that it was reproducing sound was pretty impressive. It also gets pretty loud too where I even used it at roughly 40 to 50 odd percent. There is night mode which reduces the bass level as well and it's a nice little inclusion and it can also be muted directly from the OST or indeed via the remote control. Now, as for eye care, there's a sensor found towards the front of the monitor, and this gives you a ability of adjusting the overall temperature of the monitor. In other words, kind of giving you kind of like a blue light filter on the go, and also gives you an indication of how long you've been in front of your monitor. It's not something I use, but I know there's some people out there who are interested in it, and therefore you can adjust the settings over here and indeed enable it. Finally, there's a custom key that you can tinker around with. There's one and two. And as for system settings, you can enable or disable the LED indicator that's found towards the bottom right hand side of the monitor. And you can also have a resolution notice that comes and pops up to say if you're not running in terms of its optimal setup, in other words, 4K at 60 Hertz. Now with the OSD section out of the way, I thought to quickly touch upon the design and the overall stance. Now here, the monitor has a three side borderless design with a rather stylish bottom bezel, which is finished in almost like a 
a bronze color. The same could be said about its stand. Now, this perfectly leads me onto its adjustable stand, which comes included within the monitor, and here it allows you height, pivot, and tilt adjustment. Unfortunately, it cannot be rotated. The only thing to note over here is while the stand is perfectly sturdy and is good sort of ergonomically, it does provide somewhat limited adjustments, at least in these departments, and in comparison to other monitors out there in the market, I feel that they're a little bit more flexible. Of course, if you don't like the built-in stand, you can replace it via Visa compatible stand and therefore have it on a monitor arm. Now, as for connectivity, the monitor has two HDMI 2.0 ports, a singular DisplayPort 1.4 port, and USB Type-C connectivity, all of which are perfectly adequate for a 4K 60Hz panel, no matter if you're using a console or a PC. Now, it's worth bearing in mind that the USB Type-C connectivity also delivers 60 watts of power and therefore allows you to simultaneously charge your laptop while you're using a secondary monitor. And on that note, it perfectly leads me on to my verdict. Here, the EW2880U that we have on review has USB Type-C connectivity, but if you don't need it, very much like its sibling, then you might want to look elsewhere, in other words, to save yourself a considerable amount of money. If, however, you're dead set on getting a 4K USB Type-C monitor and you want an IP panel, then I'd urge you to look at its sibling, the 27-inch EW2780U instead, because it has a higher peak brightness and is more tuned to the sRGB standard, which is much more common if you're going to be doing any color work such as video grading or indeed image editing. But of course, that's just my subjective opinion, so I'd be intrigued to hear your thoughts in a comment section below. And if you've liked this independent detail review, definitely do drop a like, subscribe and hit that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated. Alright, I've been totally dubbed, take care of yourselves and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Goodbye.